Hello folks, it's the Siggy. Welcome to my latest video. What I want to talk about is Faction Wars. Now, I'm going to start off with a caveat and say the Faction Wars as I see it and what's relevant within the Shiz, my new faction. I'll be doing this video on one of my mini accounts that's only level 31, so hopefully a little bit closer to some of you guys. Um, Faction Wars. First thing first, uh, over on the top left hand side we've got Commander. Commander, there's two of them, you may have unlocked the second one, I haven't, I don't see that as a priority. But when you look at what the Commander does, you will notice that um, although power-ups, their use in Faction Wars increased by 4% on Captain Prime, once you have unlocked um, I think it's Arctic Soldier. You'll see that air attacks go up by 3%, underwater's 3 blah, blah, blah. Plus, you get a contribution for each unit that's donated. Now, I'll come on to unit donations a little bit speci or more specifically later. Um, but for the time being, I've only got Captain Prime. What I have got is down on the bottom right hand side, is I've got one of these little pigs. This little pig gives us 15% for every contribution I make. Uh, it increases it slightly. And you'll see the reasons for that later. Um, you'd also take a chance to swap over any relevant bonuses that you want or equipped items, etc. Okay, if you're level 32 and above, you might want to be going into Research Centre. In Research Centre, as you may or may not know, um, there's different boosts. You can increase your defence by 5, 10, 20%, or all three, if you've got sufficient research centres. Next thing I want you to consider is, if there's an event on, you may as well use your faction war stuff to count towards events. So, on here, and that's not putting you out, but I'll explain that a bit more in a second. So, on this solo event that's running, at the moment, it's about winning ground and winning um, without losing units. Generally, in a faction, you get slightly more points. Okay? So, ideally, providing it's the easiest battle and I can afford to, to do it, I'm going to aim for ground... Um, battles. Okay, um, the next consideration, power-ups. I've got an area here boosted for my power-ups. Ensure that you've got sufficient power-ups that you can do your battles, however you're going to do it. I'm just going to titanium your mana there. Um, for me, for my faction, Basically, people need to make 15 artillery strikes before a faction war, or before a faction breach. I beg your pardon. Okay. Um, there's other bits that I will remember as I'm going along. Let's go on to our faction tab. Now, our CC, our command center, because we're a training faction, is level 3. And it limits the amount of items, power-ups, units, etc. that we can use. Uh, that's a deliberate reason. We need everybody to get involved. Now there's a small building over here. Over here on my map, on yours, it's obviously uh, wherever your officers have put it. Now this one is the power-up workshop. Now to make a power-up for a faction war, you need to combine, as it says, three power-ups. So the ones that you've made down, I'm pointing, you can't see me pointing, but the ones that you've made in your own power-up workshops, we take our three, we fuse them together for 3,600. I've got no oil. 3,600, and I'm just gonna show you in my stash, what I've got is I've got one flare, two heals and an artillery strike 
A point to note, the artillery strike does damage of 20,000. Heal. Gives 10,000 to whatever unit you've got left, if that makes sense. Okay. Um, the units that we can produce, ideally, at the stage that we're going to be looking at, because I've already checked this map, it is just pretty much cannon fodder, will be War ZX 2s. Um, and you've got to have at least 12 of them for this particular CC. Again, it depends how many you can have in yours. Okay. I've got to go back and get some oil. Let's just swipe that. Let's have a quick look how my drum's doing. Swipe these, just give me a sec. You're not running out of oil all the time. Not quite enough. <laughs> not my words. Cleverer than me. My good friend Laz. Um, okay, so we've got that. Um, let's go back down here. Now onto our faction wars. When you click on this tab. Okay, you're presented with four different tabs at the top. Um, you've got your own faction, where its health is, you've got the contributions, and you've got your enemy faction. When you click on these tabs, you can look and see who's battled who. Okay, you can see whether it's a win uh, or a loss. You can also see what the enemy's doing moment these aren't even awake so it's not going to be that difficult okay so back onto my faction you can also look at the breaches that have been done previously I'm going to go through this every time you do a base breach watch the one before whatever the plan is stick to your plan if the plan's shit somebody else will change it stick to a plan okay when it comes to fighting, we know that we're going to fight ground units. Um, I don't want to get too much into the nuances of the way we do our wars, but certainly in the shiz, in a training faction, fight every single battle you will um, score points for it, whether you win or lose. I don't mind about our faction glory not increasing. That isn't for us. I've got, I've got the shizzle. My initial faction, I, that's plenty of glory. I don't want it. It doesn't help, unfortunately, after a certain level. Um, so we'll fight our ground battles. It also means. If in Research Center you've got Serendipity um, unlocked at level 3, you get a gold star for every faction battle uh, you, you fight. Fight? Win? I don't know. Okay, this is a classic example. I'm really pleased about this. Now Nikita here, I'm not going to beat her. She's got a 33,900 defense. Now I've got some decent units that I've won in different events, but the best thing I can pretty much make is, I think it's these. Oh, AP-21s. That seems high. But anyway, I have got Prometheus. This is a battle I'm gonna lose. I'm not gonna bother with backup. I don't need to use that. I'm just gonna place my Prometheus on here, start the battle, and just let it go. I'm not even clicking on these. It's point. What I have got, though, is I've got 11 points for carrying out that battle. I didn't do anything. It's on my Prometheus. If you haven't got a Prometheus, just use your lowest value unit. Something that you're not bothered if you actually lose it. 
Okay, so I'm going to try and blast through these as quick as I can. Just click that there. Okay, 12 that time. Yeah, you get a little bit more. I will come on to donations, guys. I'll put a note on here, maybe, and say you can fast forward, or you can just sort it out yourself. Again, I can give a flying fig that I'm losing these. It doesn't matter, I'm still gaining points. What we're looking to do is we're looking to fill this contribution up. Once we've filled the contribution up, then we can carry out a base breach. The base breach is the part that makes or breaks a lot of patches. There's a lot of different ways again. I'll try and explain that in a minute. I've noticed on other people's videos when they say I'll speed this bit up, keep the sound going. All of a sudden, the words that I'm saying right now are a So, if I speak really slow, I'm going to work it. When you've got VIP enhanced as well, I'm going to put a button here. Right, 1254 against 923. I'm not, I'm not going to use my units. Why would I? Save your units. I'm going to call in uh, G Mick. The G stands for Grumpy. He's a lovely bloke. Older than Father Time himself. So. Um, in terms of power ups, I tend to use the same sort of power up uh, thing each time. It's up to your faction. They will tell you the best way of doing it. Now, something that is vitally important is remember this is a mathematical equation that's done. Every time you go back onto that screen, although we're watching tanks, planes, whatever, fighting, it isn't. You've just got to imagine you've got a figure to start with, for example, a thousand points, and this is going to change that sum. You need to get your head round not just what they'll do, but how long that effect will last for, like for this one, EMP lasts for two seconds, but you cannot deploy it again for another eight. You can have other power-ups deployed, but again, it's about where you believe the right timing is for that particular uh, fight. As I say, there are some things that are faction only, but I don't need any power-ups on here, really. Fella. Back up. So we've got to win. Win a battle for that. Units, yeah, okay, okay. Go for invasion and 3 8. That's about the cracker, isn't it? 3 8. No, beg your pardon. 6 50. Okay, back to there. Come you level up quick. Because I always need oil. I know my prom is currently empty, so I'm gonna save some of this. I won't be able to battle without oil. Go into there, rebuild as I can. So I've got 44 plus whatever I collect here. Need more oil to this building. It's just bloody time. Okay, back onto our faction wars. War, war. Ground. You do get a significant um, increase on points when you're winning battles. Of course, so this goes up. There are other commander bonuses that will give you an extra battle or an extra percentage of battles. 
some factions will insist that you don't come on and start battles until you've got a full 15 complement. Um, it's not a case of right, wrong. I, I just work on the basis that some of the battles are over in, in hours. And we can't expect people to be logged on 24 hours a day. Some of us sad gits are, I guess. There we go. Okay, let's run through that. You might wonder why I'm always moving uh, from over to the left hand side. The way the game works is the default position that your items are deployed on is the default position that other units fire back on. In my head, anyway. That's my thought. Right or wrong. So I move it out of the way. To me, it gives it a little bit. Protection. From the elements. Okay, ground again. The good news is we'll have got some cheap and easy points. Let's go towards our event. We've done no extra work. Now again, we've got 1254 against 923. I don't need to do a great deal here, so what I'm going to do is just going to click start. I'll use a power up. Sending him armor. Protection General Jack. Now I haven't got much oil in reserve. I've only got 46, so I'm going to go back down. See how long I've got before this in six seconds. Okay. What I don't want to do, I'll use that 46 in. Yeah. I sometimes do a couple of battles and then think, shit, I can't invade what looks potentially a great base. I've got no oil. The dog's howling outside. I'm outside so I can clean up. Came on the game. Okay. Um, where are we now? Uh, faction was ground. So on here, I've only actually. Uh, I was going to say I've only won actually two, two battles. Um, we're still moving up. I should have looked how many points you get for winning. Yeah, so 65 now makes life a lot easier. Brilliant. Okay, we can now do a base breach. Now, the base breach is what we need to do is we need to look at what's gone before us. Now, hopefully, these are going to be okay, but we've got Dangus and we've got Beast here. Um, Let's just have a quick look at what they have done. Now again, the route of actually doing this depends on what your faction officers suggest. There are a few different ways. I'm just going to speed this up see if I can find out how. There we go. So Dangus is attacking over here. He's used a flare. This is at four speed. By taking out that particular power node, it means that doesn't rebuild. Okay, so that's Dangus's breach. I'm just going to fast forward. Now hopefully, when you carry out your base breach, look at the one before. You're trying to work as a team, so at least try and follow that. What I am hoping is because this is three units that are open, or three areas that's open, I'm hoping that Beast is attacking this side still, and ideally with something like artillery on these on these turrets, which cause an awful lot of damage. But let's see. Beast is my co-general. Beast is a new co-general. I don't really know Beast yet, so we'll see. He's not, he's gone the other way. That is good. Again, taking a flare to a unit means you're specifically taking items out. Okay, when I said there's other ways, 
beast. Um, has quite clearly come from a mentality of let's take out this front row and then we'll start working back. Uh, for this one, I want to concentrate on one sector and one sector only. The right way is whatever your officers say. So let's cancel that. I need to do one quite final check to make sure I've got sufficient power-ups. I've got artillery strikes there that are 20,000 each. Remember, heal is at 10. And the units, we know that because these have got a fairly long reach, they've also got the highest attack of 655. And I've got sufficient there. So we'll go on to this. It's a status. Now on this particular breach of mine, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use my artillery strikes. And I'm actually going to... At this edge where that most severe one is, that's where I'm going to drop it, this sort of area here. One, two. Oops. Try and go a little bit off centre when you're dropping these guys. Although taking out these might end up in a staff or two for you, it does not help the faction. What helps the faction is taking away this severe defence that we can get to the back, take the power node out, and then all the sectors come down. Whatever your, your boss is upset. So I'm going to work on this left hand area. Now I said that there was 20,000 damage there. Times 5, 100,000 damage. Now my units, when I deploy them, we know that... Um, we know that these ZXs are worth 655 each. 12 of them that I can deploy 6,000. So at best, if everything is back, at best, if everything is there and I do a refill, just 10,000 for what? These are just cannon fodder. Okay, the damage that these turrets are taking is incredible. It is not about, like, the way stars have given out this, the faction wars is terrible. Um, it, it seems the more you do, the less you get rewarded. Because the stars are given for uh, eradicating an item, because the stars are done for uh, eradicating an item, sorry, it means you could take out something that's got a really low defensive value for that faction it's done nothing for us try and work as a team on it. there's a couple of schools of thought on this now generally in any other wars if you click retreat you've lost it you can click retreat on this and you still your points still count go okay that's done so what we can do is on this screen we can actually have a quick look there's been about five percent damage done across those three breaches we can take a look at the loot that we gained uh, 27,000 coins 135 uh, thorium and we've got 46 factonite that's going towards the faction um, Again, you can see what units you've used. They die. They've gone. Um, and the power-ups, that was just a confirmation of what I've used. This information is far more beneficial. Generals, but we can't get to it properly. Okay, donations. What do we donate? Now, it's an absolute fact that when you click on this donate button, you've got a plethora of figures. Now, these figures here are how many points. Now if you noticed before, it took us, I think, I think it starts off as about 300 points for the first one. Then for the second one, it's a little bit more and like 
somebody will hopefully confirm the figures and write it in the comments for everybody else. But. So we need to level this up again. Yes, of course, we've also got more fights we can do, but this is more of an ethics thing. The donations that you do to your faction all total together, along with your faction wars that are vitally important and the points that you've gained therein, the units that you donate goes towards the strength of the Jotun, the battle at the end with the robot. The lower you are, the less effective your donations are. Granted, that doesn't mean they are ineffective. When it clicks on donate, all I ask is in my faction that you donate the best units that you can build from cash. So let's have a quick look down here. And the easiest way to do this is if I look on a... Ah yes, it's my have... Wrong, no, it's not. Yeah, my have sixes. I can produce them to level four. That's the best unit. Um, so if I go back into that tab, click on Wars, click on Donate, and when I look for my have Wars, oh, they're all the way down here, they're all the way down here. I haven't got any because I've just got bored of them. But it's not much more points than this, even though I've got the contribution bonus. If I clicked on that Humber, it will add 50 points, or 35 points. Another 35 and another 35 we can confirm that yes we can however this is because it's me and me only i am not insisting my faction donate the best units that they can i would suggest suggest always saving your best units and donating what you're able to but if this unit's up here that i am no, i am no longer using boss units for example this units up here I'll donate them because I know I will go in events and I will win more when it goes for this dragonfly that's got um, power-ups of smoke on it as well you can see how the bonus goes up when you click confirm on there your donation is history you do not see it again there used to be a replay of the battle where you could see people donating units and you could see that you've got so many of your team donating the best possible units and half a dozen Muppets donating the lowest possible unit and it was so obvious now we've got to go look at the figures but that unit's gone you need to build that up and then carry out a base breach again if we look on our base breach reports we can see that on my um, breach, I got 46 fact tonight. I didn't win any stars. Tough. It's try and play for the faction. Okay, guys, that is about as much as I want to cover really on faction wars on here. If there's anything you feel that I do do that you don't agree with, it's not quite right, whatever, let me know in the comments. But, as always, thank you for watching the Siggy.